Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. I am showing you how to do head wraps today. So these are just a stretch fabric. I think this is a lycra uh, and they're really, really quick. Very, very easy. And they have a little twist in the top here. So uh, stick around and I'll show you how to make these uh, twisted head wraps. This is the fabric that I'm using for these head wraps today. And you'll see it's actually very, very stretchy. It's a really nice, funky colour. I bought this a few years ago and uh, had every intention of making myself a top with it, but haven't got around to it. Now, this fabric is about 60 inches wide. Most stretch fabrics are about 60 inches wide. So what I'm doing is making this uh, out of a width of fabric. Uh, that's the stretch of it, so that's what will wrap around the head. I've cut a strip of fabric off the entire width of my fabric at six and a half inches, and I've divided that by three. So I'll get three head wraps out of um, a 60 inch piece of fabric. This will fit an adult size head. Uh, these work out to be about 20 inches each by six and a half inches. It will fit most adult heads. If, it's, if you find that you've got a really fine head, then you might want to take it in a little bit just on the end seam. So let's get sewing and wrapping. Now that's if you're going to just make individual pieces. So if you're only going to make a few individual pieces, you can cut your fabric up. If you sew to sell, what I would recommend doing is keeping your length of fabric in one piece. So I've got my six and a half inch piece of fabric here. We'll keep the whole piece together in one go and we'll turn it through in one go as well. And it'll just save on time. So what we need to do now is pin this together with the right sides facing. So we're going to make a tube. I do have a little cheat hack for you. Rather than sewing your tube together and then having to turn the whole tube through, what we're going to do is get some tape. I'm, I've just got a long length of cotton tape and this is as long as the width of my fabric when I do my really long ones. So all I'm doing is taking this cotton tape and I'm going to pin it in place on one side or on one half of the fabric. Pin that and then we can close up our fabric and we'll pin it together or you can just take it to the machine and start sewing straight away. So what's going to happen is that as you're sewing, this tab, this tape is going to stay inside your tube and then you can pull your tube through. And we can actually do this whilst we're sewing as well. So stick with me and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we'll pop some pins in here and we'll take this to the machine and stitch it all the way down. And you've got two options when you sew here. If you have an overlocker or serger, I'd recommend doing using that. It's much, much quicker. If you don't have that, I'll show you which stitch to use on a regular domestic sewing machine. You can't just use a regular straight stitch machine because when you stretch your fabrics, it'll actually break the thread and put holes in your fabric. So I'm not going to bother pinning the rest of this. I'm just going to take it straight to the machine and sew it as I go. And I'll do the same for these ones, which are the individual pieces. We'll just fold them right side together, pin them, and we're just going to stitch all the way down the long edge. Let's go to the machine and I will show you which stitch to use on a domestic machine and how I do these on a, an industrial machine. Now if you're using a normal domestic sewing machine and not an overlocker or a serger, the stitch I recommend you use is this one here. So you can see it looks like a lightning bolt. Uh, so that's the stitch that I would use on any stretch sewing that I was to do. And that will actually allow the fabric to stretch with you. Uh, on the other machine, this is another older machine and on this one I would use the same stitch so you can see 
just there there's the lightning bolt stitch as well most machines uh, even the cheapest most generic machines will usually have that kind of stitch on it if you don't and you have a zigzag with a broken dotted line on it you can use that use a small zigzag failing that you can still use your normal zigzag stitch but just make them small stitches so I'll pop my raw edge underneath the overlocker there and then we're just going to sew all the way down once you've started this you can actually start pulling on your tape and you can see that my tube is starting to turn through and you can see the end is coming along for the ride let's keep on going all the way to the end finish there and we can continue to pull this through there's our tube made and all we need to do now is remove the tape and we've got our tube turned through very very simply so I'm going to do the rest of these and I'll also show you how to do this on a domestic sewing machine now I'm going to show you how to use that lightning stitch on a domestic machine and just to sew your head wrap up with a domestic machine. Now you can see a couple of different stitches here. Those two stitches just along there. So that is a normal straight stitch on the machine and this is the uh, lightning stitch or it's a really tiny zigzag stitch. So I've just shown you that so that you can see that there is actually a difference and it will allow the fabric to stretch with the stitches. So we're using this lightning stitch that I've shown you earlier. I have my piece of cotton tape or ribbon, cord, whatever you want to use, pinned to the inside and we'll start sewing this on the edge. I'm just using the edge of my sewing machine foot as a guide. Well, that took quite a while. So there is the uh, um, machine sewn edging. So you can see it still allows a little bit of stretch in the fabric. Now if you're sewing to sell or you're doing batch sewing and you've done the really long tube like this, what you want to do now is just take your fabric and divide it into three. If you've got large salvages like this one does, I just trim that off before I divided it. And then we can go and divide this fabric into three equal pieces. To put our headbands together, take each end and make sure that they're sitting nice and flat, that we're not that they're not twisted yet. So we want these nice and straight. There's a seam down here. We don't want them twisted around like this just yet. We want to have our seams in the centre. So you might want to take this to the iron and give this a press just to get your seams in the centre. When you've done that. Bring the fabric together with the right sides or the, the side that doesn't have the seam. So this side has the seam going down the centre and this side has the seam going down the centre. So I've just marked a pin in the centre there. We've got our seam on the one side and flat on the other side and we want the two flat sides facing each other and the seams on the outside. Slide this across to the centre point, so where the pin is here. So we only want to overlap it by half. And where this seam is, we're going to fold that across to the other side so that the back one is actually enclosed. And now we're going to wrap this one around. So basically what we're doing is just snaking around. We've got 
one fabric over the top of the other at the midpoint. Wrap this one around and then wrap this one around until it meets the other centre point or the pin. So what you've got is the seam line on the outside here and the seam line on the outside there. So you can pin those together or clip them together. We'll take these to the machine and stitch it closed. Once you've got your folds ready, we'll pop that back under the machine. And you don't want to do too small a seam allowance. I might do oh, maybe just under half an inch. Okay, that's completely finished. We just have to tie off the ends and our wrap is done. The wrapping of the fabric is still the same. We, we're just going to allow a, a bit of a bigger seam allowance here and we can trim that off. So it's just not going to have a surged edge on the end like it does with an overlocker. It won't be seen though, once this is turned through the right way you won't see any of the stitches. I'll go back and repeat that. I don't actually know why I like to repeat these. I think when there's uh, stability required in the seam I do actually like So trim the threads and just trim this back to about a quarter of an inch and then your wrap is done. So there we go. You can see that is stitched closed and all we need to do now is open this up. It's been trimmed back. Open this out and just turn that through until the seam is actually hidden away on the inside. I might have to get a head for you so that you can see this, how this is wrapped. If you've used an overlocker or a serger, wrap these threads, just get a thick needle and weave the loose threads through so they don't unravel and then we can turn this one through as well. So I have a darning needle and I'm just going to go up between the layers of the edges there pull that through and cut off the thread. Do the same for the other side and we'll trim off those threads. So there's a nice neat surged edge or overlocked edge and I'm going to go and get a head so that you can see how they look. So how quick was that? Um, this is the uh, twisted head wrap and I have to admit that it doesn't look so great on a 58 year old. I've got too many white bits hanging out there so I think it's much better suited for somebody a fair bit younger than myself. But it'll actually be great in the garden too to keep my hair out of the way because I do get lots of wispy bits there. Anyway, um, they're super quick to make, less than five minutes for each head wrap, especially on the serger or the overlocker. So I certainly recommend doing them on an overlocker as opposed to a domestic sewing machine, uh, especially if you're going to sew them for sell. So I sell these in the shop for $10 each, and all I do is I just get some card stock or um, whatever paper, sturdy paper I have at hand, plastic even, and just put them inside like that and have a ten dollar price tag on them so they don't sell too badly um, time wise look I, you can get so many of these done an hour that it'll certainly pay for your your time your hourly rate that you give you give yourself and also for the fabric that, and thread that you spend your money on so hope you've enjoyed this video uh, and i do have a couple of other head wrap or turban ideas as well. Uh, I'll be doing those in the future as well. If there's anything else you'd like me to do, let me know and 
pop a message in comments down below. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.